today's tutorial, we're going to go over how to set everything up that you need in order to run ray tracing in Unreal Engine. We're going to talk about the hardware that you need, the drivers that you need, uh, how to set up and make sure that you're running the correct version of Windows 10. And we're going to talk about the initial setup that you need to do inside of Unreal Engine to turn the ray tracing features on. So let's get started. The first thing that you need is the correct video card. Here's a handy graphic that shows which video cards support ray tracing. Right now, only NVIDIA creates video cards that support ray tracing. And as you can see from this chart, uh, you can buy graphics cards in the 10 series, the GTX 10 series, and also the RTX 20 series. If you already have a GTX 10, uh, GTX 1080, GTX 1070, or GTX 1060, 6 gigabyte. If you download the latest drivers from NVIDIA, these cards will support ray tracing, but it's going to be really slow. Uh, these GTX 10 series cards don't have ray tracing hardware built in, and so they have to emulate this hardware using uh, the features that the card already has. And so ray tracing goes really slow on the 10 series hardware. If you're gonna buy a card for ray tracing, do not buy a 10 series card. You definitely wanna buy a GTX 2080, 2070, uh, or I'm sorry, an RTX 2080, 2070, or 2060 to do ray tracing. Now, Nvidia and AMD are going to launch new cards this fall that also support ray tracing and probably do it a lot better. So you may want to hold off uh, for just a couple of months until this new hardware comes out. Now I understand that uh, purchasing these cards is kind of expensive. And uh, if you're looking for a way to get one of these cards just a little bit cheaper so that you can experiment with ray tracing, I have a couple of recommendations for you. Now this isn't really a shopping uh, channel, and so if you're not interested in, in purchasing a card, you can just jump over this part. But what I'm gonna do is show you a couple of strategies for buying cards just a little bit cheaper. So this is the website for Newegg, and what I've done is I've set up a search filter that only has RTX cards, and I've checked these conditions box condition boxes for refurbished, used, and open box. And so what this is gonna do is it's gonna show you all the video cards that they have that aren't brand new. And you can sort by the lowest price to see which cards they have currently for the lowest price and all of these support ray tracing. So you can see they have some cards here for, uh, well they have one for less than $350, which is probably a pretty good deal. Now I'm gonna put the link to this filter in the description. So if you wanna take a look at these, what I'd recommend that you do is just check this every couple of days uh, and find uh, a card that you think is a good deal and, and get that. You can also uh, create another filter for new cards. And you can see there's a couple here for even cheaper. So if you're in the price range of between three and $400, you can get a card that supports ray tracing pretty well uh, for less than 400. Now the card that I have is a GeForce 270, and I actually got it uh, used on Newegg for 250. So if you just keep refreshing this every couple of days, you may find uh, a, a really good deal that will surprise you. So again, in order to do ray tracing, you need an RTX 20 card. You can also do it on the 10 series cards, but it's gonna be pretty slow. So if you have one of those already, you can get by. But I recommend if you're in the market for a new card, get an RTX 20 series card or wait a couple of months uh, for the new cards from both AMD and Nvidia to come out that support ray tracing even better. Now the next thing that you need is the latest driver from Nvidia. A while back, Nvidia released a series of drivers that enabled race racing on uh, the GeForce GTX 10 series so if you're using one of those cards, be sure that you update your driver so that you can be sure that it supports ray tracing. Whatever the most recent driver is that NVIDIA has released, that's what you're gonna wanna get. 
The last thing that you need to check is to make sure that you're using a version of Windows that's gonna support ray tracing as well. So I'm gonna come down here to the search box and I'm gonna search for WinVer. And this is just a little application that tells you what version of Windows you're using. So you can see I'm using Windows version 2004. And this means that my Windows is gonna support ray tracing. You need to be using at least Windows version 1809 or later. So whatever version of Windows you're using, make sure that you update it to the latest so that you can support ray tracing. Next, you need to take a look at the version of Unreal Engine that you're actually running. I'm running Unreal Engine version 4.25. The first version of Unreal that supported ray tracing was 4.22. So you need to make sure that you're running at least version 4.22 or newer. Uh, with version 4.22, in order to use ray tracing, you actually have to launch it from a shortcut that has uh, dash DX12 uh, in the shortcut path. And that's a little bit complicated. It's, it's actually a lot easier to just upgrade and make sure you're running Unreal Engine 4.25 or newer to make sure that you're gonna be able to run ray tracing uh, in Unreal. All right, so those are all the prerequisites, all the things that you have to get up get set up beforehand. So let's jump into Unreal now and I'll show you how to turn on the settings that you need to run ray tracing. All right, so here we are in Unreal and I'm using version 4.25, um, but you just need to make sure that you're running Unreal 4.22 or later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here under Edit and I'm gonna pick Project Settings. And I'm gonna scroll down here to the Engine section under Rendering. So I need to scroll all the way down to this section called Ray Tracing. And I'm gonna turn Ray Tracing on as well as Texture Lod. Now this message pops up and it says Ray Tracing requires enabling Skin Cache. And I'm gonna click Yes because I need to turn Skin Cache on uh, so that Ray Tracing uh, will also work. Now it's gonna ask me if I wanna restart. And I'm gonna ignore that for now because there's one more setting that I need to set. So I'm gonna scroll down here to the platform section and where it says Windows, I'm gonna click on that. And then right at the top here, where it says default RHI, I'm gonna drop this down and pick DirectX 12. I need to be running DirectX 12 to support ray tracing. You also wanna make sure that you have DirectX at 11 and 12 checked here at the top. Okay, with all of these settings set, I actually need to restart Unreal now. So I'm gonna close that project settings panel and click the restart button. All right, so here we are in Unreal again, and how do I know that it's actually working? Well, I can come up here under the title of my project and mouse over and you can see the last line there says graphics RHI DirectX 12. So I am in DirectX 12 and I have ray tracing enabled. If I come over here to the lit menu and drop this down, you can see that I have this new entry here for ray tracing debug. And I also have this path tracing entry. So these features have been enabled inside Unreal. And that is showing me that, that uh, the ray tracing features are turned on and working. Now, the last thing that I wanna show you today is where the ray tracing settings are in your scene you need to make sure that your scene has a post-process volume. And then if you come down here to rendering features, you'll notice that there are a bunch of ray trace settings inside the post-process volume. So your homework this week, uh, while you wait for the next video, is to play around with these settings and see what kinds of effects and visuals you can come up with. Uh, before we end today, I do wanna show you that this scene that I'm using here I downloaded for free from the Unreal Marketplace. So if we go back to uh, my web browser and switch over to the Unreal Marketplace, this is the subway scene that I'm using. And I'm gonna use this in all of the ray tracing examples that we use in the next couple of weeks videos. So if you wanna download this uh, for free, you can follow along with the tutorials as I show you how to set up ray tracing in this scene uh, and troubleshoot performance and those kinds of things. 
So in the next couple of weeks, we're going to go over ray tracing using ambient occlusion, uh, ray tracing for shadows, ray tracing for reflections, and then finally ray tracing for global illumination. And we'll finish up with the last video in the ray tracing series on performance optimization. Ray tracing can be pretty heavy, so it's important to make sure that uh, things are as set up as optimal as possible. So we're gonna go over all of this material in the next couple of weeks. If you wanna make sure you don't miss those videos, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And I'm really looking forward to going on this ray tracing adventure with you. We'll see you next week, everybody.